Hello everyone, my name is Johan and today I'm going to talk about how we built a solution on top of Apache James open source software that serves all the mailboxes for all Estonian residents. Um, so what is this project? Um, this is a service that is served by Information System Authority of Estonia and it was built uh, by a company called Nortal that I work for and uh, the idea is it's for communication between state and the resident and it's mostly state initiated communication so like uh, the resident has a personal mailbox and the state can send letters uh, and notifications there and also it has a calendar so if you have a, like a uh, driver's license that needs to be renewed you get a notification to your calendar and you can link that with your uh, with your google calendar or outlook calendar and uh, it will uh, eventually like more uh, events get piled to the calendar so uh, the the software we built it's microservices architecture uh, horizontally scalable and uh, and it's encrypted, the content. So, me, my name is Johan Asaru, and in this project, I was a solution architect and a Java developer. Previously, I have carried CTO role in two startup companies, um, and other than that, I've, I've been a Java developer most of my life. And uh, regarding, this is an Apache conference, so I am a member of a project management committee of Apache Finerect, Finerect is a, a micro loan uh, platform for world's 2 billion people who are underbanked or unbanked. Um, and it has in this conference, it's Finerect has its own track. Uh, but uh, today I'm talking about Apache James and uh, for past year when I was building uh, on top of uh, the product with the, with the team, uh, then uh, eventually I was invited to become a committer in th that project and I do orienteering as a hobby. So a uh, little introduction to this Apache James if you haven't heard of it. So there are more than 200 Apache projects so might have happened that you haven't heard of it. But uh, So I use boulders or big stones um to kind of highlight the technologies that uh, can be used to run uh, james which is an enterprise mail server you see a lot of technologies underneath so it's highly customizable uh, and uh, it has configurations which are uh, distributed and horizontally scalable uh, so um, uh, it has an active community and uh, you can have, uh, le let's say, if you need an enterprise mail server, then you can choose, like, if you want to keep the email on on a disk, then it's called MailDir, or you want to keep it in a relational database and access that with Java Persistence API. And uh, you have also option to keep the email in uh, S3 object storage that is has an index in Apache Cassandra. Uh, and if you have a user database, then uh, some companies have it in Active Directory and you can use LDAP to link with the uh, existing directory or you can have your own in, in a uh, database. So, of course, there is Elasticsearch for a search. Apache Tika is, is a project uh, that builds an index out of uh, attachments and there are two uh, queuing uh, systems, Apache Active MQ or Rabbit MQ. So these are the technologies you can kind of uh, build James out of, but it's not like a mix and match out of the box. There are some uh, predefined configurations. So we were using the one uh, that supports distributed system and horizontal horizontal scalability. I'm going to talk about our, our setup a bit later. 
but let's first welcome to Estonia. So I'm Estonian and right now uh, I'm in Estonia. <laughs> so where is it? It's a country in Northern Europe. It's a, has a population of 1.3 million. And maybe you've heard about Estonia regarding maybe digital society. So we have a lot of uh, public services online and uh, they are connected together with a secure system called XROAD. We also have rather many uh, startups, maybe uh, most startups per, per person. Uh, so maybe you have driven with Bolt, uh, transferred money with Wise or, or use Skype. Uh, and we have an e-residency program. So if you are not resident of Estonia physically, you can, can become an e-resident. So the state gives out electronic identity and uh, there are already 83,000 e-residents and these uh, residents can run their EU company from anywhere in the world. And there are already like more than 17,000 companies created. And a uh, uh, cool fact, we have like internet voting for many years now. And uh, like you can see almost half of the votes were given uh, using internet. So next, uh, how, how we got to the point that we, we now have a system like national mailbox. It hasn't gone live yet, but it's about to happen this month, end of this month. So. Uh, almost there uh, and uh, how come we built our solution on top of Apache chain so I'm gonna talk about that so uh, it all uh, started with a vision of a new system and uh, our uh, the luckily the input wasn't request for proposal like we might have worked with RFPs uh, they tend to be quite uh, specific about what needs to be done. Uh, our goal was more to improve an existing system and add features to that. So the existing system consisted of a uh, like Postgre database that stored official documents. <coughs> and um, Tavkot, uh, email server, which is also open source, but it's it stores the email on disk. Uh, and um, <clears throat> uh, sorry, mm, there were um, scalability issues with this uh, system. Uh, so uh, we started with, uh, of course, uh, analyzing the requirements, and uh, I have listed a few of them. <clears throat> um, so um, some of the emails are confidential they need to stay in this mailbox uh, and the person has to log in and come and read them there the others can be forwarded to personal email uh, users some users have additional forward addresses with their first name that last name at Estonia E um, and of course it has to be very fast we needed a search engine um, and uh, we needed a kind of state calendar that I mentioned earlier that you, uh, you have a view of all of the events uh, that are related to the state. So some document expiring, you have an exam with the uh, driver's license bureau and so on. And uh, eventually uh, we came to an understanding uh, that it made more sense to build a new system rather than improve the old legacy one and add in the features. And there were many reasons. Um, and the biggest one was that it was two separate systems which were difficult to combine into one. And um, Apache James fit very well. Um, and we uh, we kind of uh, started looking more deeply into a uh, Apache James. So uh, it, it's what we did is assessing. We were assessing this project. Uh, so two years ago, I visited the Apache conference in Berlin, and Leah Cole she gave a good presentation about assessing any open source project. 
So uh, if you need to go dig more deeply into it, there is a whole separate talk in YouTube. Uh, but uh, uh, basically, the idea is that if you start to build on top of something, you need to make sure it's alive. And you can check that by checking the how many issues have been resolved, uh, recently opened, are the regular releases. You can, uh, it's advisable to look who are the people active in the community and uh, how many are there. Uh, and uh, of course, like people, the enthusiasm can wear off. Uh, it's a big part, but uh, it's it's good if if a company is is also uh, or there are companies who are paying uh, contributors um, to uh, kind of uh, uh, build this open source. So it's it's the companies are not maybe always listed, but if you do a research, you can find out. So we did this research and. Uh, the outcome was that uh, we believe that this project uh, will be there in five years time, 10 years time. So the next step was to convince uh, the customer, the state agency running the service uh, that uh, the, it's a good idea to build it on top of Apache James. So uh, this is these were the steps we took. So. We started, I started with informing the community about our plans. I, I sent an email um, and it, it got attention from the community. And, and also, mm, I think it was a good start, like uh, start to, to kind of not do it in a, a secrecy, but, but uh, to kind of be open about it. And it, it's like, uh, it's the good thing when building for something for the state that maybe if you do it for a private company, you there are more uh, things you cannot disclose, but here you we were able to be open that we have this plan. Um, so uh, I, I built a, like a separate slide deck uh, to demonstrate how it can be done. I'll later share one slide in this uh, presentation a bit later. And uh, then uh, the, part of demonstrating was also uh, informing the decision makers like how how it's how the, the work looks like when uh, building on top of open source and i think it's it's very important uh, to be open about uh, that uh, how 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 it's going to look like in the in before it's actually happening. And of course, uh, we try to be honest uh, and we listed uh, some of the things that we thought were disadvantages. And the biggest, our biggest concern was that uh, nobody in, um, in Estonian state uh, had uh, experience with Apache Cassandra. So using a distributed database, uh, so this, like we said from the beginning, this is uh, something that uh, your people who are like maintaining the service, running it, they need to become familiar or they need to be trained. And uh, and luck luckily there were people who were ready to look into this and and uh, become kind of uh, experts on the field. So. Uh, after a while, green light arrived, uh, and uh, this was exactly one year ago in September uh, 2020, uh, and we had uh, one year to to complete the system, and uh, our team was uh, me, so I did some development as well besides um, outlining the architecture. Uh, two of my colleagues and um, uh, analyst slash project manager and uh, on the customer side uh, there was product owner and a few devops engineers so how we got it done um, so the first goal was 
to get familiar with Apache James. And uh, since Apache James is only an email server backend, then we also had to kind of uh, work with a front end library to build the UI. So, and uh, yeah, one of the other uh, disadvantages of uh, open source products is uh, often that um, there is not so much documentation uh, as maybe some other systems. Uh, so we kind of uh, spend time in in uh, reading the code, uh, shooting requests against the server, and then uh, gradually building the competence and kind of asking questions from the community. That was very, uh, that's actually the next step. <laughs> Uh, get to know community and get active in the community. So uh, we we agreed with uh, Teller Pona, uh, the, um, the most active contributor, I think, uh, in um, in James. Uh, and uh, we had a like a video call with he and some of the other pairs, and uh, we kind of uh, synced like what is the functionality that we need, and they are currently building and. Uh, what would be the functionality that we need, but we have to build our own. So I think it was very progressive, uh, and um, and uh, it it gave a good. It's always good to have a, like a video call with, or meet even if possible, meet somebody if you didn't have this possibility in person to uh, to get to know the people you are kind of working with. And uh, one step that we did and. Um, we kind of found out where we could get paid support. So it's open source software free, but actually oftentimes there are companies providing this. Uh, we didn't use it, but it was a good to know that it's it's out there. And I know in Finer Act, um, there have been discussions that, uh, that maybe um, it is possible for someone to propose like a, that I want this feature and I'm ready to pay X amount of money for this feature. So kind of there are ways uh, to uh, to get paid support uh, and think of them early. Um, so uh, yeah, we try to identify the missing functionality and later we also found out parts that were not compliant with uh, what our customer requested. Um, so uh, we, for example, my colleague Andreas uh, lifted uh, in the Elasticsearch version. Uh, so our, the customer wasn't, uh, since the, the version that was used in the Apache James was uh, out of support, the customer uh, needed uh, for us uh, to use like a newer version that they could deploy to to their infra. So uh, we did that and we also kind of uh, contributed back some functionality that we needed, but some APIs that were missing. And uh, uh, we also split up. So uh, uh, one of my colleagues was working towards James and my uh, other colleague um, Evgeny was working towards uh, getting the UI, UI library like in, um, to have pull requests there that we needed. Uh, and uh, finally, yeah, we had to implement the missing parts. And and uh, what's maybe the takeaway here is that if you have like one year to do the project and uh, ideally, you should have everything you need from the public uh, side. It should be ready in half a year. So because it takes time to adjust with the release cycle. Um, and of course, yeah, uh, you have to plan um, time to, if, if you go there in the end, you might run out of time. So uh, first, like focus on, on adding features to the to the public libraries and uh, 
and the public product. Uh, so this is the slide that I was mentioning earlier. This is the most crowded slide uh, in this uh, presentation. <laughs> so uh, basically, it's a copy of the slide uh, uh, that I used uh, when I was uh, like uh, presenting the customer the idea uh, how we build it on top of uh, James. And here, wh what I want to, wanted to highlight is you have this orange developer uh, in the middle who's working in the team, in the implementation team. And uh, like normally uh, a developer like commits code to some repo. So we, these are these orange repos like extensions, backend, frontend. Uh, and yeah, the extensions are later deployed to inside chains, but this is a separate story. But anyway, what I wanted to highlight with this slide is part of the work goes towards public repositories in GitHub. So there are pull requests towards James, pull requests towards this front-end API. And, uh, and uh, mm, so, <laughs> uh, and these take time. And uh, yeah, what, what I also, you have to take into account that uh, you might need to kind of uh, re the pull re request might be rejected and you have to uh, change it or have to like uh, adopt what what are the guidelines coming from the community so it's also very important like if you plan to come up with a pull request go ahead and uh, inform the community earlier to get feedback rather than implementing it all and then finding out that it doesn't fit uh, with the idea of the product. So, but the community was very helpful and uh, we managed to get all our pull requests that we needed. Uh, and then the yeah, second thing, what you need to be, uh, uh, aware of is that uh, it's it takes time to get a release so in development it's fine you deploy a snapshot of like the latest uh, code but uh, eventually to production you need to have a release um, so it it's also takes time for the release to happen uh, you have to like watch out when it's coming and uh, and kind of be aligned with that so this release is deployed in into your server in production. And so the kind of custom code in our case is extensions. So we have several backend uh, repositories and the front end are deployed directly. And then there is of course this JMAP client library. I think I've, I didn't tell you the idea about what's, what's JMAP. So usually if you have a, like a, a, your email client in your computer talking to the email server, then this client talks uh, IMAP protocol with the server. And uh, in our case, we need to have it uh, like a web service. So uh, the, in the old system, it was uh, this front end code sent uh, HTTP request to uh, like a service in the middle that translated them to IMAP, got response in IMAP from the server and then translated it back into HTML. So what we liked about James is that it, it supports JMAP. It's a new protocol. It's like a couple of years old that uh, it you can uh, basically compose the HTTP request in the browser and it can be sent handed over to the mail server and it, it's kind of optimized for this email exchange. Um, so uh, there is no man in the middle and it's like, um, once you implement it in, 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 in your front end, you can you have your like app in the future also uh, talking the same protocol. So that's, that's a big advantage of James that it has this JMAP support, but the downside was the the client library was also pretty new 
because it's a new protocol. So we had a lot of, uh, we had like everybody, the community had a lot of work with that. Okay, and uh, I told you earlier, I'm gonna share you how, how we built our setup of Apache James looked like. So um, I'm gonna use these boulders or big stones again uh, to illustrate this. Um, and uh, one boulder is in, inside James. So, so this is the custom extensions that James allowed us to write. Basically, the use case was like, let's say the, your driver's license is about to expire. Uh, the State Department sends you the email and uh, uh, it has a, like a calendar in white and this is kind of detected and uh, added to your state calendar that on that date, uh, the, the license can expire or you have like an appointment if you, if you just want to get the driver's license and you have an exam on that date, that time, then you also get this notification to your calendar. Um, uh, just you won't, wouldn't miss it. And so uh, our uh, setup of James included, uh, as we needed to be distributed, we have a distributed database Apache Cassandra uh, that kind of keeps like the index of emails, but the actual contents are stored in this S3 object storage. We have Elasticsearch that uh, gives us uh, fast searches and all email servers need to kind of have uh, something like a queue because it, they need to accept the email very fast and uh, then they just put it in queue and process it uh, like uh, with, on their own speed. And uh, in our case, the user directory stayed outside of the project. Uh, so we didn't put it in, in James, but James was flexible enough. So uh, it kind of uh, basically when the outside system says that you must have, this user must have an account, it's created on the fly and nobody understands it wasn't there just like one second ago. And yeah, we, our own uh, kind of uh, microservices uh, were added on, on top of uh, that. Uh, front end, uh, some web services for X Road, uh, data exchange, and of course, this custom calendar that is not part of James, but it has is is deeply linked with that. So, uh, so we did a project that uh, uh, kind of uh, improved James a little, besides uh, building on top of that. Uh, but uh, I have uh, one more news, <laughs> like uh, Estonia has a CTO. I don't know how many countries have a CTO, but uh, Estonia has one. And Krista Wahar has said that uh, he's, he's pushing this idea that if something is done using taxpayers' money, then the IP of uh, outcome should be free for anyone to use. Like, uh, and uh, like any citizen or company must have the freedom to build a business out of that work. So I've included a link. There are already, this initiative has some, some around 10 projects already there. So our boulders will be also eventually there, but it's gonna take time because we first have to go live end of this month and then it, it's gonna take uh, like uh, time to review. And you know, just uh, like a disclaimer, when like James is, is fully fledged open source product with a community. So what happens with, with our orange boulders is that this is, this is not like open source, it's published source. So it's not a full fledged product, but, but you can, you can still use that work, uh, to build stuff, uh, if you need to build similar stuff. So I think it's, it's, it's a good idea that the work we did is, is reusable by somebody else. So if this uh, uh, presentation ends up in uh, YouTube, I will add a, like, and, and the code is there, I will add a direct link under the video. So thank you very much. Do you have any questions?